Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is JD. I'm here to give you guys another FL Studio tutorial. Now this tutorial will be about controlling effects within your songs. You can apply this to certain sounds, certain samples, whichever you like to call it. Um, this is very important and this is going to be a beginner slash intermediary type of video and I just wanted to show you guys how to do this because it's very important to know how to do and it is also a crucial step into furthering your progress and knowledge and skill set within FL Studio. So right here I am going to show you guys what the song I made from the other night is going to sound like before I apply any effects and control them and this is how it's going to sound beforehand versus what it's going to sound like later. Keep in mind, I made this last night. It was very bare bones. It's uh, it was just kind of made up on the spot. But without further ado, here we go. That's what it sounds. Okay, so I want to go over here and I want to change over here pattern one. And pattern one is right here, the SCR Rocky C3. Okay, so this sample, this sound, this instrument, whichever you want to call it, okay, we are going to apply effects to this, mainly because it's the main lead in the song and that's where uh, most of the sound, the, the unique sound comes from. You have, of course, your your sub layers and also added, of, um, you know, percussions and other sounds within it. But distinctively, this is a major part of the song. Okay, so I want to change this up. I want it to fade right in the beginning from no volume to volume. Okay, so simply that can be done, right? So this right here, I want to apply to channel four. You can use you can use your scroll wheel or um, you know just click and drag it. Um, and this is going to be insert four on the mixer right here. Now this is connected to that. I it has no effects on it right now. So let's apply an effect. Actually, I said volume. So this is our volume slider right here. So. If I want to create a fade in from no volume to volume, I can do so by right clicking and going to create automation click clip. Now this is the main gist of the entire video, controlling knobs, controlling sliders, using create automation clip and changing the volume of that specific effect, but within respect to that knob or slider. Whatever that knob or slider does is the volume you're controlling within that effect. So I guess for the effect in this case, although it's not really an effect, it's the volume, right? And we're controlling the slider. So we're gonna create the automation clip, right? This represents the level right here, the volume level of the current uh, slider that we have selected to create an automation clip with. Um, that is what it is right here. It directly represents what it is here in the playlist. So if I was to drag this all the way down, right, it's going to drag this all the way down. It's going to control this slider, basically. Okay. Now, this is a, a pretty long, gradual uh, increase in volume, and that's going to take a while. Okay. So you can see that when you um, hover your mouse over it, there's points on it, right? There's a point over here, a point over here, that's the midpoint. You see that you have the up down arrow over there and you have this end point over here. So what I wanna do is I wanna right click and you can right click wherever and it's gonna create another point and it's gonna create a midpoint between uh, the midpoint you just made and the last point before that. Um, 
And what this does is basically changes the angle of the level between those two points. This dragging it over will, um, uh, that controls the distance between them. Okay, so anyways, this is going to be the volume level right here. I don't want it all the way up, that'll be a little overpowering. Okay, and I'm just gonna level this out over here. So I just wanted to give a nice slow fade in and then I'm going to have this sound come in and that's when I want this to be at the volume where I personally think it should be. Okay, so let's give it a listen. Okay, so simple. You just slid in and just went from no volume to volume, okay? And if you want it at max volume, you can do that too. That's a little overpowering in my uh, opinion. Now you can change the angle right between these two points and it's gonna sound a little different. It's gonna be a different type of fade in. It's gonna be faster. Now, if you want the fade in to be longer, obviously you're just going to drag it longer to wherever you want it to fully fade in. Um, and that's uh, pretty much the gist of controlling the volume. Now I'm going to delete that and I'm going to keep the volume like down over here. It's pretty loud compared to the rest of the samples in here. So anyways, say if I wanted to create a filter, like uh, it, it sounds like it's underwater or something. Uh, if the, the general context of that so I'm gonna uh, select slot one and select a uh, fruity filter in my plugins if it's not here you can go into more plugins and find it and just add it to your list over here um, I had to do that so I'm just saying all right so now which each with each um, effect that you apply you should I highly encourage you um, playing the sample that you want to hear right that you're applying the effects to and you want to um, mess with the knobs to see which one has the most effect over the effect that you're using so for instance the cutoff frequency is going to make it sound like it's underwater in some sense so So right around here, it starts sounding like it's like coming from underwater and coming up through the surface and you have a full volume of the, the instrument there. And you can change the high pass and this has different effects over the filter, over the, the mixer slot that you're using, right? So if you want to change the high pass, So if I want to keep it right here, because I'm going to keep it right there. I like that volume. Okay, uh, you can change your low pass, you can change the resonance, uh, resonancy, uh, and your band pass. But cutoff frequency, I feel like uh, I. I, that's all I'm really concerned with here. I'm not really looking to change these. Now you can also control these as well, but all you have to do is right click, create automation clip. If you wanted to control the high pass, you can also right click and create automation clip. You can create as many of them as you want for the knobs that you want to get exactly what you want from the sound, the effect that you want to control. So right now, like I said before, this is directly representing the um, the cutoff frequency that we have placed here in the playlist. So let's hear it. And that's how it sounds. All right, now it's the same level all the way throughout. So obviously I want it to fade in. So I'm going to right click, add the dot, and I'm going to bring it all the way up. So now it goes back to its regular sound sounding way, I guess, in some sort of sense. Anyways. 
So what the fruity filter here does is now I'm controlling the cutoff frequency and the cutoff frequency goes all the way up and essentially it's it's controlling that specific sound and you're going back to the original sound of the sample that you've applied the effect to. can that's not a problem if you want to change the angle you can do that as well and that is another example with just a fruity filter now you can do this in all sorts of ways with all sorts of different effects um, and don't be afraid to right click and see what knob or slider can create an automation clip. Most of the time it it can. So if you want to add a phaser which has this kind of oscillating sound between both of your ears, you can also do that, right? So right here in the phaser, um, right here the dry wet, that, uh, that controls, you know, how much of the wet there is and wet is the sound of the effect how loud is the volume of the effect versus dry which is this the volume level of the actual sound that you're working on or the sample that you're working on um, so if it's a hundred percent wet it's gonna be 100 percent phaser you have a hundred percent dry or zero percent wet it's just gonna sound the same but without the phaser so, um, I think this is an important one to control. So, I want to create an automation clip and I want the phaser to kind of end right around here. So, right there. So, the phaser is very strong here. You hear it oscillating pretty loudly. And it's going to get quieter and quieter. There's another example of that. And if you want to create, you know, a more, uh, a faster oscillating frequency between both your ears, you can do that as well. And you can change the sweep frequency right here, as it's called. All right, so if I want to create an automation clip there, I can do so as well. And if I want it to get slower and slower and slower all the way up here, I can do that. So the phaser is getting quieter and it is also getting slower as far as it's oscillating or sweeping from your left and right ear. So So yeah, that's the basics of it. Now there is a way to cut up and and make these uh, uh, these automation clips shorter and put them in only when you need to, so you don't have these things just dragging across the entire song. Um, I'm not going to show that for now, but what I am going to show is just the very basics of how to apply it, understand it, and get the gist of it. And it really does involve a lot of playing around as far as with the knobs and seeing which one has the effects that you really want to control within the actual effect that you're using. So that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it helpful. If you did, please let me know. If you didn't, please let me know. 
I appreciate any constructive criticism here on the channel um, and also any uh, happy criticism, if that's a thing. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time, and have a good day. Yeah.